In the last few lectures, we learned about custom attribute directive in great detail. We learned how to create a custom attribute directive, how to use a custom attribute directive, how to pass data to a custom attribute directive, and also how to apply a custom attribute directive conditionally. Now it's time to talk about structural directives. So in the next lecture, we are going to create our very first custom structural directive. But before we create our custom structural directive, let's first try to understand how a structural directive works behind the scenes. And once we understand how a structural directive works, it will be easier for us to implement a custom structural directive. So let's go to VS Code. And here I have created a brand new Angular project. Now in this project, if I expand this source folder, in there we have this app folder and in there we have our app component. So for this project, I have created a single component called this app component. We don't have any other component here. And if I go to the HTML file of this app component, there we have some HTML. So basically we have an outer div. Inside that we have three divs. In the first div, we have a button. In the second div, we have some paragraph. And in the third div, we have some headers and some paragraphs. So if I go to the web page, it looks something like this. Now our requirement is such that when this page initially loads, it should only show this upper div where we have this plus button and this second div where we are saying read terms of services and privacy policy. This third div should not be displayed initially. It should only be displayed when we click on this plus button. And to achieve this, we can use ngif directive. And if you remember, ngif is a structural directive. So let's go ahead and let's use ngif directive on this third div. So here on this tip, I'm going to use ng if directive. Now, since ng if is a structural directive, there we need to use an asterisk before it. And then to this, we can assign some TypeScript expression. So here, what we are going to do is, let's go to app component class. In there, we have this title property. And let's go ahead and let's create another property. And I'll call this property as display. And it is going to be of type Boolean. And initially, let's set it to false. So what we want is when this display property is false at that time, we don't want to display this third div in the web page. Only when this display property is true, then only we want to display this div in the web page. So here to this NGF, I'm going to assign that display property. Okay. So if you save the changes and if you go to the web page, you will notice that initially that div is not rendered. But when we click on this plus button at that time, that div should be rendered. So what we need to do here is once this plus button is clicked, we need to set this display property to true. And for that, let's go ahead and let's bind a click event on this button element. So for the event binding, we use parenthesis and then we specify the event name. And to that, we can assign some TypeScript expression. Now here, I'm going to assign a method to it and I'm going to call it display terms of services. You can name this method anything, but I'm simply going to call it display terms of services. And let's go ahead and let's create this method inside the app component class. And in there, let's go ahead and let's set this display property to true. For that, let's say this dot display equals true. Okay, with this, if we save the changes and if we go to the web page, so initially that div is not rendered. Now, when I click on this plus button, the display property will be set to true. And in that case, this third div will be rendered in the web page. So this is how the ng if directive works. Okay. Here we are using this ng if directive to this ng if directive. We are assigning some expression. If that expression returns true, this ng if will render this div in the web page. It will render the view on which we have used it in the web page. And if the value which we are assigning to it is false, it will not render that view. So in this case, for this ngf, this div element is its view. Okay, or you can say it is the host for that ngf directive. Now, when we use this asterisk before a directive, we are simply telling Angular that this directive is a structural directive. And when Angular finds this asterisk behind the scenes, it does few things. And the first thing which it does is it wraps the view on which we have used the structural directive within ng template. So when this Angular application will run and when the Angular will find this asterisk before this ng if directive, the first thing what it will do is it will wrap this view, basically 
this div in this example within ng template okay so it is going to wrap this div this view within that ng template so this is the first thing which angular will do the second thing what it will do is it will move this ng if directive on that template so here this ng if will be moved to this template and from there this asterisk will be removed and now this ng if directive will be used like an attribute directive so it will be wrapped within square brackets like this okay so behind the scenes angular does not use asterisk asterisk is just to tell angular that the directive which we are using it is a structural directive so it has to do few things before it renders that directive and what it has to do it has to wrap the view of that structural directive within ng template it has to move that structural directive on that ng template and from there it has to remove the asterisk and it has to use it like an attribute directive so this code here this html it is equivalent to the html which we were using before where we used ng if directive with an asterisk before it okay so let's remove this and this should still be working so if we save the changes if we go to the web page you will see that the third div is not rendered in the web page but when we click on this plus button the display property will be set to true and in that case that third div will be rendered so this is how angular uses asterisk in order to create a template for the structural directive first it creates a template using this ng template then it moves the structural directive on that ng template it removes the asterisk and wraps the structural directive within square brackets now the next question is what if i also want to use else with ng if so for example let me go ahead and let me comment this ng template for now okay so we have learned that when we use ng if directive let me go ahead and let me again use this ng if directive on the div itself and when we are using it on this div there we also need to use an asterisk before it in order to tell angular that it is a structural directive and to this let's assign the display property again so let's say what we want is if the display property is true then we want to display this div otherwise if the display property is false in that case we want to render something else and in order to render something else what we do is we again use ng template in there we specify what we want to render so for example in this case what i will do is i will simply render this paragraph so i will use a div and inside that div i will render that paragraph now on this ng template we can specify a template reference variable i'll simply call it maybe my temp where and now here where we are using this ng if directive there after this display property i can specify a semicolon and then i can say else and then i can specify this template reference variable so here what will happen is if the display property is true this div will be rendered otherwise if the display property is false this else part will be rendered the template whose reference variable is my temp where that will be rendered that means this template here will be rendered right and on this div let me also go ahead and let me use this class this css class just to design it so now if you go to the web page initially this display property is false so in that case this div will not be rendered instead this template will be rendered so if you go to the web page you will notice that that template has been rendered but as soon as we click on this plus button that template is not rendered but the third div is being rendered here so how is this working let's try to understand that so again what will happen is as we learned earlier when we are using this ng if directive angular will first create a template so let me go ahead and let me uncomment this ng template from here and also this closing ng template okay here this ng if will be assigned with this display the one which you are assigning here and then it will use another directive and that directive is ng if else and to that it will assign this reference variable and now let's go ahead and let's remove this ng if directive from this div and keep in mind that 
the host element, the HTML element on which we are using a structural directive. It is the view of that structural directive or it is the host of that structural directive. In this case, this div is the view for this ng if directive. All right, so let's go ahead and let's remove it from here. And this ng if and ng if else should still be working. So if you save the changes again, if you go to the web page, initially you will notice that the else part is rendered. But when we click on this plus button, that div on which we have used the ng if directive that will be rendered. Okay, so this is how ng if directive works when we specify the else part there. So just to recap, when we use a structural directive in Angular, before that structural directive, we specify an asterisk. So when the Angular application runs and when it finds the structural directive with an asterisk before it, what it does is behind the scenes, it creates a template using this ng template. It wraps the view of that directive within that ng template. It moves the structural directive on the ng template and there it removes the asterisk from the structural directive and it wraps it within square brackets like this. So there, the structural directive is used just like an attribute directive. Keeping all these points in mind, in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's create our very first custom structural directive. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.